ahead. Uh, thank you everyone for coming. Um, this meeting is recorded. I'm probably gonna post it on YouTube after the fact, if that's okay with everyone. If it's not, you can either tell me now or email me later and then we will deal with that and that is fine. Um, anyways, uh, this is the kickoff meeting of what, we're, what I am proposing we call board co-op. Um, and I will talk into a lot of a little bit of details. It's really to improve testing of OpenWRT upstream and really testing of OpenWRT any builds, but um, one particular case is, is up, upstream on devices. Um, I think we'll do an introduction. I'm gonna have a, a presentation, just kind of like my thinking, and then we'll just talk about that and then um, kind of see uh, <clears throat> where we go from here. So uh, I guess I'll uh, we'll have introductions. I'll introduce myself um, and then um, kind of give an explanation of you know why you're here and things like that. So as I mentioned, I'm Eric Schultz. I am uh, the community manager at Purple Foundation. I have um, Purple has has a contracted with me to uh, lead up this uh, effort in trying to improve OpenWRT testing um, with the board co-op. Um, and I uh, am here. I'm in open major open source advocate, care a lot about it, um, and I think OpenWRT is awesome, so that's uh, that's kind of why I've been involved in this. So I guess we'll go from here. Who's next? You can do it alphabetically, or what you should do is just call off each individual caller and ask them. Yeah. I have a, I have a phone caller. I don't know their name. One, four... Zero eight. That could be me. Uh, oh, Hauke, okay. am I, so I'm Hauke Mertens. I'm, it's now the phone, ah, the phone caller speaking. Yes, that's me. So I'm using the, yeah, the phone to connect via, via audio. Okay. Um, yeah, I can start. So I'm yep. working for Lantic on now Intel, and we are using um, OpenWRT as a base for our SDK, and in addition, I am also active in the OpenWRT community. And I would like to see some builds, uh, some tests on real hardware of the upstream stuff. Okay, thank you, Hauke. Alexander? Were you able to get your mic working? Uh, yeah, um, I'm Alexander. I'm. Um, I hope you can understand me well. Yep. Um, I'm a freelancer working on OpenWRT for some years now, and um, yeah, I'm also interested in hardware-based tests. Uh, I've written some tests already, but only for software, and I'm also working on the reproducible builds for OpenWRT. Awesome. That's great. Jeremy. Hi, uh, yes, can you hear me? Yep. Hi, so uh, I'm Jeremy Abington. I'm calling in from Imagination Technologies. Um, I'm sitting in our uh, business unit called Imagination Systems, and we're the guys uh, behind the, the creator uh, boards, if, uh, if anyone's heard of those. And it's fairly new, and we're of, uh, obviously putting... Um, open WRT onto those platforms. So I'm keen to get involved um, and really just sort of see how we can participate. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Matthew? You all hear me? Yep. Um, so I work with uh, QCA or Qualcomm Atheros. Um, Kathy invited me to talk about our kind of our setup for our testing we use and, and et cetera. So that's much a summary. Okay. Uh, Max, I, I don't think you have a microphone. If you do, uh, speak up now. You can also introduce yourself via chat as we go on. Uh, Mike? Uh, I'm Mike Anderson. Uh, can you hear me? I'm also with yep. uh, Qualcomm Atheros. I worked with Matt on uh, some of our automated testing of uh, Open WRT based router builds. Awesome. Thank you, Mike. Peter? Peter, are you there? I think we lost Peter. All right. Uh, Kathy, would you like to go next? Sure. I'm Kathy Jory. I don't do much except say rah rah. 
and uh, <laughs> encourage everyone to get, do good work. I like to follow all the all the excellent development that occurs in Open Liberty. Awesome, and thank you. I think we have a great board farm, so I hope we can share it and make this board farm cooperative work. Awesome, I completely agree. And Tapper, I don't think we have, um, I don't think you have your mic on. I think someone else just joined. Uh, a one is a phone, 1831. Yeah, that's me, Eric. Oh, this hey is there. Art. Uh, hey this there, is Art, Art, president of uh, Purple. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining. All right. Well, I mean, we'll get started. I will kind of do my presentation to go through kind of uh, where the status of testing is and where I think we can we can go from here. Dave, you have a question? Well, I didn't have a chance to introduce myself. Oh, I thought you did. Sorry. <laughs> Dave Tott. I used to run the Sarah work projects. I've been involved in fixing buffer bloat and working on open WRT for about 10 years now. And I'm very interested in seeing someone pick up the load of the build farm and test. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. And um, I will uh, show my presentation right now. Um, so just, uh, I, I can't actually see what everybody, uh, if everybody's saying anything. So uh, obviously, so I, I can hear you. So if you have a question, Looks don't, good. don't hesitate. Awesome. So I'm just going to go through this presentation. Uh, what I'm proposing is we call this uh, this effort board co-op, and I'm kind of going to go through where the status is of testing right now and where we can go going forward. Um, and the summary is, is there's two sets of problems. There's some for manufacturers and there's some for users. Uh, the problem with OpenWRT testing for manufacturers now is there's uh, no standard open source system for testing OpenWRT builds, much less an automated one. Um, Upstream builds are often not tested against devices leading to integration problems on merging updates, or more often, the upstream changes are just never integrated, leading to poor customer experience, security holes, et cetera. I think we all kind of know that, uh, that problem. Um, upstream OpenWT developers can break certain devices and not even know since there's, there's no automated testing. I mean, they know if they break the build, but you know, let's say something, um, one of the ports stops working or something like that. I mean, they, they, they really don't know until somebody reports it later. Um, the problem for users is, is users who want to run upstream really have no idea if a build is going to break their device or it's going, even going to boot. Um, you know, in some cases, the nightly builds aren't even made for a device and they have to build it themselves, um, which, is a, which, is, which is kind of part of the same problem, but it kind of all relates to this. Uh, users have no idea if their devices work well with upstream. I mean, theoretically, this should be something that that um, companies could promote, but there's no real good way to verify that or or um, or uh, you know get a rating that says you know you've worked with upstream this often or whatnot. Uh, and an, ambi an ambitious user who wants to verify an upstream build works. They don't have the tests anyway. They don't have the tests that 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 the company used, and they don't have any tests on. Um, uh, and they don't even know what to test for in some cases. So fortunately, there's been this step forward with the QCA board farm. And uh, I'm not sure how familiar people are with it. Um, it's something great that that Qualcomm Atheros has come out with. Um, and Mike and Matt have both been involved in this. And, and, I'm, and I think that this is a, is a real step forward in actually uh, improving these tests. But uh, to summarize, it's a Python program for running and maintaining a suite of tests. It handles the information for connecting to a router model, a network, a network controlled power switch, and test and test computers. So, for example, you want to test the networking um, on the WAN. You could you could connect it to a PC, and then um, the system would uh, connect to that PC, verify that the networking works, and if it doesn't, then report an error or something along those lines. Uh, the test cases are defined as classes. Then, there's an example. I, I gave the example of ping.py. Um, that is in the uh, in there right now. And the key design features, which I think is important and really makes this useful long-term, is there are common APIs for devices, power switches, and test computers. It's relatively easy to extend for different router devices. Uh, one example is in qcom underscore mips.py. So that, uh, that uh, has, um, that works for most things, uh, but, what the solution is is how do we actually get this distributed? How do we get um, 
sorry, I th thought there was another slide there. I must have accidentally put it in there. Um, the solution is, is how do we have distributed public test clouds for uh, OpenWRT devices? Um, and the, the uh, issue with QCI board farm is, is very much based for a, uh, a, one, um, a one company uh, design. It's not designed for doing this on a broad scale. It's not designed for doing this in a distributed fashion, really. There's no, the, the management stuff on, is not built on top of it for that, which is perfectly fine. It wasn't designed for that. Um, so what I'm proposing is is board co-op, which is a, which is kind of like kernel CI for OpenWRT plus tests. Uh, we would test and publish results of test of nightly OpenWRT builds. Uh, the tested devices are going to be distributed at device makers or or similar potentially volunteers, depending on how we design this. Um, Purple would run the management server responsible for managing test runs, recording results. Uh, securely maintaining authentication information for connecting to the distributed devices, et cetera. And Purple would run a public website for highlighting the results of the test of various boards. We'd also have a public API and web hooks uh, to allow diverse groups to build off of the data. So the current board farm design looks like this, is you have a PC or server, and then you can connect to test rigs is what I'm calling them. Um, and the PC or server runs build farm itself. Uh, and then you connect to a test rig. And a test rig is a set of these things. It's a console server to actually, um, which is connected to the router via serial cable, um, which is where you make the commands to actually run the router. Uh, you would have a LAN. Um, you could potentially have a LAN and a WAN device. You don't need a LAN. Um, that's kind of a, but it kind of assumes that you will. It's not a requirement, but it's kind of an assumption that this is quite likely. Um, and then you would also have a power server or um, basically a power switch that you can control uh, via ne the network. Um, and, you, and you may need that power switch for think cases where you actually need to reset the router and, um, and potentially the LAN and WAN devices. And you SSH into all of each of, each of these things. The console server right now is, uh, it, the example is Telnet. It doesn't actually have to be Telnet. It would probably be SSH and if we were to uh, build off of it. Um, but uh, it's kind of in that kind of, uh, uh, design, if that makes sense to people. Uh, configuration works a little bit like this. Um, you would have your, uh, it's a JSON file. It has your board type, a connection command, a LAN device, the location, which is, um, I don't really think there's much of a need for it other than just description, um, a power IP, power port, and WAN device. Um, oh, what's missing? Uh, it's designed for single organization use. The management of multiple instances isn't standardized and is a bit ad hoc because you know there isn't a standard way of doing this right now. Uh, there's no web interface for displaying the results. Extensibility is pretty good for router, but there's probably more hard coding than we would like. Um, and extensibility for power switches, reporting services, and others could probably use improvement. And this is not a criticism of, of Board Farm. It's just that wasn't in the need at the time. Um, and it has some assumptions about network topology. It, it, it ex expects there to be one WAN side PC and an optional LAN side PC. But what if you want to test all of the ports on a uh, on a um, on a on a router, for example? There's four LAN ports. How do you actually do that? Um, you could theoretically have them. Uh, if you wanted to have those all set up different PCs, there's no actual way to do that. Um, it's also possible um, that someone may actually have multiple WAN. Uh, uh, WAN ports that they want to test. So um, it's not really designed for that. So again, the solution's an open source platform, heavily based on build farm for testing builds of OpenWRT against a farm of devices. Um, they're open source tests for devices which are generalized as possible. We're going to try to avoid no device, we're gonna have no device specific tests unless absolutely necessary. Um, we can test any OpenWRT embedded device, including non-router devices, uh, can be used for maintaining a public or private device testing farm. Um, and that's important it, th because of the way this is designed, I intend it to be you, like we would have the purple version of this testing uh, co-op kind of thing. But if you wanna just run it inside your company, you're more than able to and, um, and run it on your builds and on, on your devices separately or whatnot. It, the idea is that it would even be able to uh, cooperate theoretically um, so that you could have one management server that purple would run one in your company. And then when the purple one isn't running or yours isn't running, the other one can run or vice versa. 
uh, device testing would be distributed across multiple locations. Um, this is more of a, uh, a kind of a practical design decision. Um, I don't think that it would be feasible for Purple to actually run our own uh, lab uh, to do this testing. So the idea is that the testing, these um, these devices, these these uh, testing rigs, would be distributed at various locations, and then people would like effectively register them. Um, but uh, that's kind of a practical solution to the problem. Whereas I think Kernel CI, they have it as somewhat all in their control, but uh, I don't think we have the, the resources to do that. Um, it would maintain reports on test progress, boot and test logs, uh, links to builds, et cetera. And the goal would be to test two different builds daily, the vanilla OpenWRT, which is you know completely the base build, and then one with Lucy included. Um, so, it, and as I mentioned, there would be a public instance of this open source platform for testing nightly builds, and that would be the one that Purple would run. Uh, the instance, again, would every device get tested once a day against nightly, or if there isn't theoretically a nightly build, then potentially it would run the next time that there is one. Uh, the test suite is automatically updated before the nightly tests are run, um, and we would get that from the, the uh, GitHub repo, and the test suites would all be um, contributed by, the, by uh, organizations or people that were interested in testing something. Um, like Dave had mentioned, uh, you know, testing uh, performance or something. You know, that's the kind of test that we would accept, and then it would run against all, um, all the devices. Um, the results will be made available so, to the community so everyone can improve, and uh, every device will be tested with the same test suite and package set. Um, the, the key with the test suite is, is while they would be the same, there would be some slight modifications. Like, obviously, if something doesn't have, someone wanted to to test, say, I don't know, GPS or something. Um, if your device doesn't have a GPS, we're not going to run a test on that because that's just going to fail and it makes no sense. Um, but if you're in a category and you know if you have a WAN and you know a WAN and a LAN, we're going to be testing the WAN and LAN uh, um, tests. We're not going to just skip them uh, just because I don't know for whatever reason. The, the key is that this is this is going to be as neutral and uh, fair a testing framework uh, for users and for manufacturers. So the proposed design is kind of uh, is is like this: is that effectively you would have, every device maker would have their test rigs that they want they want to connect to this, and Purple would run the web front end and a management server that would actually um, run that would connect to all this. Um, and then we'd have a set of repositories. Um, and as I mentioned, everything is intended to be open source. So the repositories would kind of be the uh, kind of the truth in this case. So as much as possible, uh, whatever version Purple is running would be the ones that are in our repositories. Um, the board co-op front end would be, uh, it'd be an Angular, React, or Ember front end. Um, Python-based web service backend. The intent of this is, is so that it could be reused for both the um, people visiting via the browser, but also uh, people who want to uh, verify, you want to do some sort of automation or you know report on, on the results and things like that uh, for other applications and things like that. They can, they can connect to the web service. Uh, it would display the job results and device stats. It'd be used for providing the authentication information to the board farm manager. So effectively, let's say someone registered um, their uh, test rig, they would have to provide, uh, they would have to um, have some sort of SSH keys. Um, and they would have to either be provided or we would have to provide uh, the public key to them or whatnot. Um, it, that's how you would get this, it would be done via this system. Um, that would obviously not be in a public uh, database, because obviously, that would be uh, dangerous. Uh, and we would also, you could also register webhooks. So let's say you could, um, when a test is done for a particular device, you can get a report uh, or you can have it, you know, contact you and say, hey, the device, the test is done. Here were the results. Um, and then someone could, I don't know, do some sort of graphing that we don't provide or whatnot. Um, Board Co-op Manager uh, is uh, is a little bit, it's a level down. It's the Python-based manager for managing each of these jobs, each of which is an instance of Board Farm. Uh, combine the provided configuration from Board Farm Configurations Repository, which I will discuss next, 
Um, and then it would combine it with authentication and, and uh, private reporting information for reporting into um, perhaps a, uh, a forum or something like that, the connection information it would need for that. To create an actual configuration to run through board farm on the board co-op manager server. Uh, and then it would save and report the results via webhooks, email, forum posts, etc. Board farm configurations is a repository of those board farm JSON files we discussed before. Um, it would it contain the information for actually running tests on a remote device instance. Um, it wouldn't include uh, login information, obviously. That would be uh, kept private um, by uh, by Purple or whoever you theoretically ran this. You could run your own and and keep that private as well. Um, and here's just an example of how the configuration could be changed. Um, it's not a not a huge difference and um, Mike and I kind of discussed this yesterday and we have some ideas but it, it's more just to make this as uh, generic as possible um, and uh, to allow people to extend uh, board farm as much as possible to set up different power power switches different um, different LAN and WAN and, and PCs um, all kinds of things like that uh, other things that could go into configuration could be the tests. Um, the tests are going to be organized into suites by functionality, as I mentioned before. And the example was, you know, if a device is in a LAN connection, we're not going to test LAN connectivity. Um, it could be placed in an INI file like they already are, but it might be helpful to put them into one place. I think that's that's kind of up for debate, but it's other things that could go in there, uh, whether it's in the INI file or in the JSON file or whatnot. Um, and then we would obviously have QCA board farm, which is the device device testing framework already written Python, which we've discussed. Um, we would be working with the uh, uh, Mike and, and Matt and other people at QCA who are actually managing that to, you know, provide changes. And it would, you know, obviously all of us who, who when we need tests added, we would, you know, propose those tests and work together to kind of uh, to get those in there. Um, and then board co-op docs, which which I would propose is just a markdown-based documentation for running board farm and board co-op. Um, it's important that this be very well documented so other people can build off of it and uh, improve it in time. So uh, what to do with the, the rig the rest of the day? That might be one of the questions because these tests are not going to take that long in a lot of cases. Um, and it's important that that the way this is designed, your organization, if you run a test rig, you can use it however you wish the rest of the time. Um, the the uh, board co-op manager would only connect when it needs to. It's not going to just you know hold on to a connection all day. Um, so theoretically, uh, and I think in a lot of cases this would make sense for for device makers that they would have their own bo board co-op in, instance internally. Um, and they would run uh, either their own builds or um, or something else, something unique that that they would not want to uh, get out there, um, or run um, different tests that they they feel that aren't aren't uh, appropriate to to put out there. We would obviously encourage them to do it as much as possible. Um, so you can uh, you can certainly do that. Uh, and the other thing is there could be a user. Um, and this is one of the unique features of uh, Board Farm right now because it's all SSH um, and, and Telnet in, this, in the example, but we would obviously use SSH for security reasons. Um, a user could connect and run their own tests or connect to the device and, you know, run manual tests, like, you know, just, uh, you know, install a new build that they had on their own PC, a developer, and then, you know, install it and run it um, and run some tests or whatnot. Um, and obviously, you could do this. You don't even have to have the purple one. We would obviously prefer that because I think that that provides a lot of advantages publicly and it, and it allows us to improve upstream. But you theoretically don't wouldn't even need to to, to do that. Um, we think it would be best, but you know that's that's an option because it is open source. Um, and I'm kind of just going to go through some of the front end UI ideas. Uh, this was kind of just something quick I came up with. Uh, it's very much based on kernel CI. Um, you know, a front page that would simply say, you know, what are the stats for, you know, how many tests have passed of, and how many devices have passed, a percentage versus, you know, the current nightly, the last nightly, and then, you know, over a week. And obviously, this would be something we would want everybody to contribute ideas and, um, and things that we would put on here. We'd have a devices page where each of the devices would be there. 
um, and we could you could sort them by uh, a user would sort them by you know the tests that have passed, um, what their pass rate is over a period of time, things like that. Um, this is probably a little more interesting. Is is when you actually get to uh, a device page uh, that that description up there would we would probably want to have manufacturers be able to provide a description uh, you know not super long but something that would fit their what they're looking for um and obviously a picture and things like that and then we'd also have the test stats and then the jobs that are actually running um or have ran in the past and with some indication um whether it passed sufficiently or whether any of the tests failed and probably the more the most interesting one is the job page which would have um the device you know how long it ran a uh what lab or or manufacturer this was being held by the configuration the log the and it would also provide the open wrt commit the test uh commit and the configuration commit and the big thing there is the idea is that this should be reproducible um if somebody if somebody gets all these pieces of information and they have the exact hardware they need and we would expect people to provide you know a description of what the hardware is. Obviously, we're not going to be sending you hardware to test in all case, in most cases. But if you can get that stuff and you run it, it should match. Um, and that's kind of the goal. So it's important to actually have a very clear understanding of what you need to actually run this test. And we would have um, a set of tests that would uh, result at the bottom, like you know the boot and what is the actual boot log, how long it took, and then as you go down. Um, a list of other tests that have passed and, and you know, one that failed or something. Um, so some of the open topics that I have um, is related to builds is how do we make sure that we have the builds available to test? Um, right now, I'm, I think that we only test that the builds build bot only runs um, vanilla, uh, kind of a vanilla version of OpenWRT. Um, am I correct in that, that it doesn't have Lucy in there? Or am I wrong on that? No, Lucy. Yes, I think. You... Go ahead. Yes, Lucy is uh, not added into the data to into the snapshot builds, only into the release builds. But you can install it later on. Um, you can install all the packages that are there. Okay. Yeah, we yeah, could so do that. There yeah. is no need to keep it in the default image. Just do an O package install. Okay, of it. makes sense. All right. I, yeah, that probably won't have any effect on that. Um, the other things was was a lot of the builds are right now, there tend to be very much like you build for the generic architecture. You don't build for a specific device. And for this, we would probably need a way to have the specific device build. Um, you know, like you go to the point of say a profile or a sub target or something like that. Um, we could, to do that, obviously we would expect like, you know, if, let's say a company says, I want my device built every day. We would expect that company to provide a a build slave to actually do that, to make sure that it gets done. Um, but I think it would be appropriate for it to be part of the whole OpenWRT build bot. I mean, it, if possible, we don't want to do this separately. We, we want this to be as much a part of the community as possible. If that make, does that make sense to people or? Um... So in most cases, um... The given target is mostly configured. There's only a few cases, for example, the AF10K is not included by default in several builds where it should be. So mm -hmm. seeing the manufacturers push harder to get their favorite features and stuff configured by default would be nice. Um, but do you want to extend this all the way out to including additional packages that aren't really part of the OpenWRT core? You use GPS, for example. Um, I think we would, we would be, yeah, we would be testing, um, that's a good question. I think we'll have to think about that, but my, my goal is to be testing as generic as possible. But like you said, you know, I gave my example of GPS, which I, I don't actually have an example of a device that does that offhand, but, um, what, what you would do in that case, I'm not exactly sure. Um. We would obviously, the key of this is we need to actually have the builds to test. Um, and right now, um, they're generic, and that's appropriate for a lot of these cases. But if you want to actually make sure that it runs on, you know, 
let's say just the CI40 or something, you need to have the build for the CI40, not the build for the MIPS, if that makes sense to people, because there may be unique features or unique uh, configurations that need to be tested with that. Um, well, I, th I think that whoever's, you know, if, if we're hosting our board farms, we make uh, available our board farms, we're, we're testing all of our, all of our profiles or builds. And then you're saying, in addition, when it's not busy doing the specific uh, Qualcomm Theros profiles, we could be doing the generic OpenWRT profile. Built, built for the built. particular Quil yeah. Qualcomm device. But yeah, I think that I think that would be the appropriate way of handling that. But is there any interest in, for example, we always have a um, upstream driver focused build and then, but it has other packages and it has more weight and heft and a lot more packages but it's completely open source based. Is there any desire to have, to draw the test results from that into the co-op or not? I think that's that's an open question because that's kind of similar to, you know, let's say, just give Dave an example. Like, let's say you wanted to run a, a test of open or of Cero WT or something. How would we put that together? And I'm not sure that that's a clear solution. I kind of use the upstream as the, try to be the 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 standard base to get started but i think that's an interesting topic is how do we do things that are um open wrt i don't want to say a fork but a, you know a flavor in, in a way yeah of a flavor because obviously some platforms are much beefier than other platforms so we run a whole bunch more packaging mm -hmm. packages on top of it but you kind of want to know whether that pa you know whether that build and that beefier profile works or not we still need to know that well you certainly need to know that yeah i think that's something uh, we could we could oh go ahead uh why we cannot split the build the the image the testing image and the test farm um, um because it's much more easier if you just supply the devices uh, to a test framework and just say hey start a drop um, download this image from this public location and test and do some tests uh, like the Lava testing framework is doing. I'm not sure I understood the question. So um, the question is why not to split the testing, the test framework or test uh, mm -hmm. system from the build image. So like, like I can say, hey, I would like to build zero WRT on this. Uh, uh, no, I, sorry, I built zero open WRT on my own mm -hmm. uh, laptop, mm -hmm. upload it to somewhere in the internet. And then I can say, hey, test framework, just download this image from there, deploy it on that device, and please do these tests. So it's separated, the build image is separated from the testing framework. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, th I think that, that unless I misunderstand, I think that what we we're proposing is separated. The, the issue is whether, is how do we actually get the builds in? We could just build them ourselves or something, uh, theoretically. Um, well, there could be there mul if there are multiple build servers, and for example, say we have some build servers that build a particular profile, or uh, and we have a platform that's, you know, say Hauke's Atlantic, you know, platform is a carrier gateway platform, so they want to enable all the carrier gateway features on that platform, and then give the test results from that. Then maybe they're doing the build of the beefier profile for the carrier gateway and then sharing the results. That's, yeah. So one option would be um, <clears throat> you can use the image builder. So you not you are not building the um, image directly, but the image builder. And then you can just tell the image builder that you now want to generate an image which has this set of packages or it should have that set of packages without uh, the need to recompile everything so you can generate an image in a minute oh. or less <clears throat> and then you can do it for every ball it's probably as fast as flashing the image that's yeah, a good then idea you could, then you could allow people to say oh for that platform yeah enable this 
this other image A and B, and that other one, you know, we want images C and D or, or profile, you know, mm -hmm. different profiles yeah, but, for different platforms. But so my idea is more like. Thing. Go on, please. And then you still have to build the original packages and things, and if those aren't built normally, it's not going to matter if Image Builder is used or not. If you're not building yeah. the GPS application, Image Builder doesn't help you at all. So I'd recommend one thing is you not know, digress into build because it's a separate issue. Mm -hmm. the, the board farm, the testing, co-op, whatnot, is, is, takes images and tests them, right? Yes. It fills with all that aspects of things. I mean, we can figure out a way to produce more build. It's not that hard of an issue. The harder issues are the ones you had in your presentation of access control, uh, how do companies contribute their boards, where are things hosted, mm -hmm. um, reliability is a big thing you didn't touch on is how, how do you make these things, you know, super reliable? Because if you start running tests for hours at a time, um, minor issues with the network, for example, will cause things to fail. So mm -hmm. there's all sorts of things that need to be hashed out. That's fair points. Besides the Besides the build, <laughs> yes, and that's the, the least difficult thing to to deal with. Okay, that's probably a good point. Anything else that you know? I think so, I am terrible with names. There's someone else had had was, was saying something too. Uh, yeah, it's, um, maybe you still misunderstood my idea because my idea is why why we discuss about the target images. Because target images should supplied by the tester and not by the test system, so so that it's possible for me that I can say, hey, I I pushed the binary the target binary image to some mm -hmm. location downloadable, so that the test so I, so that the test system will just deploy my image, and so I am not limited to the images which are built by Atlantic or uh, mm -hmm. Falcon Marceros. I, yeah. I mean, I so, think that I, I, if I if I understand what you're saying is, is is effectively you're saying that you would want to put arbitrary test images on uh, a device. That's, that's pretty much the way we handle it today. Is is we yeah. pass a path or a URL to an image, and the test infrastructure runs that. It doesn't okay. matter where it came from. It comes from people on their desktop. It comes from automated build systems mm -hmm. and whatnot. It's just you pass an image in, and then it tries to load it. You have information on how to load an image for a particular board type, and then you run it. Mm -hmm. And BuildBot can invoke the test tool, and a user, end user, can invoke the test tool as well. Mm -hmm. And getting BuildBot to produce the right images is just a configuration thing, and I'm yep. getting the right resources for the build build nodes. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think these are two different things. So one thing is. Uh, but we want to test OpenWRT trunk or the current branch of something. Um, and the other side, I think, is uh, to test some development images, like you said. Um, if uh, someone is hacking on something and then he wants before committing it um, to see if it's actually working or if it will break something else or something like this. Um, I think we should try to get something to work uh, pretty fast so that we can extend it later on not to so not build the super system design the super system and uh, in the end uh, don't have the resources to actually implement it and mm -hmm. set it up so i think we should focus on the most important things first and then extend later on okay seems reasonable to me <clears throat> i think that's probably a good way of thinking about it I mean, getting boards out in the public place, some sample boards out in the public place, getting a configuration and a way to have arbitrated access to those boards is, I think, the first step. And then it doesn't matter what, what test framework you use, you just you, you interface with the uh, JSON information about what's available at a particular station, and you can write a test that does anything. It could be the board farm stuff. It could be someone else's scripts they've already written. It just needs to be using a standard API that, that talks mm -hmm. to a board, which is what, which is can be discussed as well, but you, you've had some on the slides as well. Mm -hmm. And we've actually extended that quite a bit too. I mean, it's does weird, we have weird things in there, but not necessarily ideal to share or use normally, but like we'll have like USB topology 
for the for ports described will have you know mm -hmm. more than one WAN or more than one LAN device attached to a board, and that'll be described in that JSON file. There's mm -hmm. no standardized format necessarily, but it's extensible at least. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I'd I'd love to love to kind of know how how you guys are doing that, and we can we can discuss that more now, or we can discuss it later. I mean, I think it's. I th I, well, I, I, how? Yeah. Do yeah. we have a do we have a starting point of how someone you know puts together their own little board farm? Uh, that's on the QCA board farm yep. GitHub account, and should we? Mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is, should we encourage people to go off and start there, or do we need to wait for the co-op? uber management functionality I, I i don't think we i don't think we need to wait i mean the quicker we can we can get people actually working with board farm itself or something along those lines is, is the quicker we can actually find what the problems are and and figure out what what needs to be added and how do we actually make this public and things like that yeah so. and then and then to get to encourage people to get started mm -hmm. uh are people limited by having the the equipment, either the test targets and or the, you know, automated power switch, stuff like that. I so yeah. Talking I, about. Go ahead. Well, um, I kind of like what Facebook has done with their open compute project. They, they say, okay, if you buy all this gear this way, for example, this is the power switch we integrate with. Mm -hmm. um, this is the switch that we use that we can control the VLANs on. Um, by laying out you know, a kit that uh, an interested company could buy and then layer on the stuff, it would simplify matters for people to replicate the work. So we've yeah, effectively I like that done idea. that, I believe. So we have a list of hardware that things work with, I think. Okay. But I mean, someone needs to set up an, a public station, basically. Right. Okay. So like, you would locate that in a neutral place, like a hacker space, maybe. Right. Um, or some nonprofit somewhere, so you don't have to deal with uh, other forms of security, I suppose. You have a community manager to open run that space. Um, as I imagine visiting your current board farm requires uh, dealing with several layers of security. I mean, from a remote network standpoint, yeah. I mean, that's not really feasible for us to share that, right? It's even it's even difficult for us to put stuff in a DMZ zone as well. So there needs yes. to be a, a way for us to give hardware to someone and they put it in a rack somewhere and and it's accessible to everyone. I don't think yes. giving hardware to people is an issue. I don't think necessarily donating equipment to run the thing is an issue. I think it's the person that manages that is, is needs to be identified. And mm -hmm. So I, I'm speaking to a, a QCA person, not a purple. Does purple have physical office space? No. That's the best of my knowledge. We do not. Unless right. there are several nonprofits in the uh, in the California area, ISC, for example, mm -hmm. that have a lot of space available. Um, you could also the pseudo room over in uh, Oakland and mm -hmm. other places like that where you might be able to establish a good location that's open enough for people to to work. Okay. I also saw that Alexander posted a link to the validation.lenaro.org, the Lava test framework. Mm -hmm. How does Board Farm differ from Lava? A yeah, good Lava question. I don't know. Oh, sorry. I mean, Lava is a, just another test framework. So in theory, setting up boards somewhere, you could run Lava on the boards, right? Mm-hmm. So okay, Lava so the, is just a different test framework. It's a test framework. Right, right. right okay. Setting so, up stations and having an access control to boards at some specific site is 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 separate from what tests you run on the board. I mean, you think about it as, as something. You have a, a description of the boards and how to connect to them and and whatnot, and you can interface that with Lava, with QCA's board farm, with uh, expect scripts, right? 
I mean, mm -hmm. and, and even a developer manually doing things. That's that's always been my opinion, at least. Okay. I mean, if, even if you just start, even if the first goal is just to set up boards for our developers to use. So what if we have a whole lineup of Lantiques boards available at a public location for all OpenWRT developers to have access to access to do their own testing on. I mean, doesn't that improve Lantique's upstream quality? Same could be said for all the other companies. So you just get a, a repository of boards first, right? Yeah, that's a great idea. We should just, and and maybe this is one thing we can go back to Purple and say, uh, if if someone's willing to host a board farm in a, you know, ISC or a place that has space or or they have out of their company, if they can do something special, smaller companies might be able to do this, then people should just, like you say, set up a board farm first and then we'll, uh, and allow access to developers to test their own builds. And then over time we work on connecting up to the automation of pulling, pulling mm -hmm. builds from different places. Okay. I think that makes sense. All right. So one other thing I, I might suggest is a, mm -hmm. I don't know if we want to, I don't know. I don't actually talk too much on the OpenWRT develop, develop mailing list, but mm -hmm. just deciding a place to talk about this on a mailing list, if it's there, that's fine. But um, for example, like I have, up, I build upstream upstream every day and I run regression tests on them every day. Mm -hmm. So I actually already do this internally and I can email the results of these emails and we can start working towards a sort of a situation where it's more open and run in a sort of neutral environment and other people have access to the stuff because right now I can just send you the results I can't really let you connect to the board mm -hmm. and run your own stuff but so something else to follow up on yeah I think that's a really good idea but I mean I you guys are doing that at QCA too aren't you I I'm at QCA yes oh you're at QCA I'm sorry I was thinking you were you were from imagination I'm sorry this um, is Matthew sorry yeah sorry um it, is is Lantique doing something like that how okay? Uh, we are only doing it with our own fork, but not with upstream open WRT. Okay. <clears throat> so that's the same. I mean, we do that. I, we do both, right? So, mm -hmm. but if if I mean, it's a way to start getting people to a common ground. So if Lantique started using their test stuff on on upstream, we use our stuff. We can see what we're all doing, and we can come to a consensus on on what the next the next best step is. Okay, I think that's. That's that seems reasonable because there seems like like that like uh, um, coming up with with something that's a little uh, less ambitious. Uh, but um, right, because when you talk about people using you know, our test framework or someone else's test framework, it's mm -hmm. it's hard to get them to to jump. But if we have a generic a neutral site to run tests, we can it's a starting point at least. I think that's a good idea. All right. Um, I can go to my next slide, but that's kind of uh, unrelated to this because uh, we are, um, I don't know what that is. Um, but uh, this is kind of the things that, 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 that I had uh, mentioned before, but um, I think that since we're going in a, in a slightly different direction, I think, um, where, what, do, what do we think are the next steps? It's finding a lo location, finding boards, um, and uh, coming up with a standard, um, as Dave had mentioned, kind of like a standard set of uh, a kit, effectively. Yeah, I think, well, I think I, a hardware yeah. kit would be good. And if we could have purple fund kits for people who can't afford, who don't have a company paying for their kit, that might help too. Okay. Well, that's a, that's a one-time operational uh, one-time mm -hmm. capital expense, which is, yeah. you know, quite a large one. It's, it would be nice to have working uh, uh, remote control devices as power cycle things. Uh, however, getting this sort of stuff built is manpower intensive, and mm -hmm. keeping it running is and useful is also manpower intensive. Mm -hmm. uh, to what extent could, to, to what extent would the initial uh, purple funded farm be are you going to get up every morning eric and say i got to go fix the build farm yeah that's the big thing i agree <laughs> yeah yeah purple definitely has to fund uh an administrator 
uh, I think, to, to manage anything that, mm -hmm. you know, especially the co-op part of it and anything. Oh, yeah, that's, definitely. Mm -hmm. You know, we would, we would need somebody, whoever that is. So, um, yeah. Do you think we would get it to work that he has one location and when there's some someone who manages all these boards, I I think it would be so so easier to um, to get his uh, first um, to an easier way to get to some solution that we would have it distributed so purple only sponsors some server which is hosted at some arbitrary um, server retail in some mm -hmm. data center at where you can just buy it, uh, rent it, and um, <clears throat> yeah, when anybody who wants to operate this can operate some, like currently they are operating build bots, someone can operate their build farm or something like this, and if Purple would sponsor something like uh, the money needed for the equipment, I think it would be, yeah, I think when we would not have some uh, one location, and um, but yeah, some somehow distributed. I think it would be easier to to accomplish the goal to get something. So I think, from my mm -hmm. opinion, it would be nice to get at least something to work. Um, so something that is better, and um, we should not mm -hmm. focus to get the the best solution which is possible. I think when we try to do that, we will end with nothing. Mm -hmm. That's reasonable. So you're saying Purple sponsor the first board farm instance that's publicly available for people to run their test builds against. Start that way. Purple would sponsor the central server Start. and um, like um, QCA would upload, would run the test on OpenWRT trunk and upload these results to the server. I think that would be from the network security. I hope that would be okay from the network security policy of mm -hmm. QCA, and yeah. Uh, yeah. then could be that some other people in some hacker space are also interested in operating a small setup for some other boards um, and also upload them there. I think uh, it's the kernel CI is also a distributed system and not a central system. So if there are some people you can send a board to, and then they integrate mm -hmm. it. But I think there are more than one location um, where this is. Where the boards are located. Uh, Kernel CI also use Lara, but also mm -hmm. some own scripts. Uh, they have a presentation somewhere on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did a little bit of investigating of that. They, well, I, well, I do think that they are distributed. I could be wrong, but I think they're all in the, under the control of Lenaro, which is a little bit of a different. Would be a little bit different from this, but not a huge difference. But. I mean, and also, is, can you access them as a developer and just connect to wars and do your own thing, or is it all? I don't know that. I I don't. I had, was under the impression you could not, but I I maybe I'm misunderstanding that. I think I think that's correct. I, I just there's a big difference between yes, because effectively we do what Lenaro does, right? A, a QCA does what Lenaro does, and that's not what we really want here, right? So keep that in mind. It's easier to do that when you take when you take it the next level, and you have to have, you know multiple users all around the mm -hmm. world, multiple sites, networking. I mean, it becomes sort of complex. So I agree with what, what what's being said here is that we should incremental, incremental, incremental. <laughs> yep. Okay. Yeah. Incremental and spend. Well, Lenaro has some interesting policies towards corporate contributions. The engineers there are usually dedicated half time to Lenaro activities. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that level of integration of purple with its friends in QCA and Atlantic um, uh, exists, question mark. Not quite the think, same, right? Yeah, we, I don't think we have that, we don't, I don't think we have a formal policy on that. But it's, it is a good point, is that, that um, that's one way they do it. Inside of QCA today is one of the founders of Lenaro. His name is Matt Locke, very talented guy. I suggest you tap him. Fortunately. He no longer works for Qualcomm. Yeah, he now oh, he works left? for Len Lenaro. Directly? <laughs> yeah, he works at uh, Lenaro now, actually. All right, well, he had, uh, he was, he's, was, he's a good guy. <laughs> Agree with that. All right. So, uh, 
I guess we have six minutes left. What are the next steps do we do we feel? I mean, there there seems to be um, two kind of ways of going about this. Um, and I'm there's a couple there's a few different threads too. I think we all agree of this is there's the idea that people can arbitrarily um, connect to boards, which is which is one idea. Um, another one is is people don't arbitrarily connect to boards that that the boards are run. Um, at a some sort of site, who, whether it be the company or a volunteer, and that they submit um, results of tests. Um, there's the idea of we coming up with a test uh, kit for people to get started with this. What do people think is the to do? I, I guess I'm asking. Yeah, I I, th I think you're right that. Well, one of the things Matthew McClintock said, publish OpenWT trunk results. Anyone who already has a system set up, publish, how, you know, how do we publish results? What do we, we just publish them to a mailing list for now. And then anyone who puts a board farm up that has external access, how do you arbitrarily allow developers to connect and run their own dev image? Mm -hmm. um, so I'll tell you one thing right now is that I can't tell you how many times we've, giving people the whole minimal example, this is what you need type thing. Mm -hmm. um, no one ever does it. I'll tell you that. No one's going to do it if you just say, oh, you just need to buy this. this, this. I mean, maybe someone will do it. I'm being a little bit pessimistic, but it, it's a little bit easier to... Uh, Build farm in a box. It's, right. It's totally like... It. I just sent a link to our docs, the documentation. It actually has a picture of a minimal example. Mm -hmm. You know, a little re power reset. Raspberry Pis is the clients and, and a router so um, um, I'd recommend that we decide who's going to make a publicly accessible station and go from there and then people can play around with the next steps I so. think you're right uh, I think that's the the route that's going to get the least or the, the fastest adoption Okay. So this guy here, this example, I just pasted into the chat window. That power reset thing costs about a hundred bucks. The Raspberry Pis cost twenty bucks, whatever they are these days. And you could probably set up twenty-five stations for under five grand. And if you have the twenty-five human, stations. Yes, the capex oh. cost is just very trivial these days. It's the person cost of getting all exactly, those things configured correctly. Yes, uh, is a pain. So we've toyed around with that. Actually, our current setup we have, you know, we have instead of Raspberry Pis, we have like VMware with with VMs running for all the clients. And I mean, our goal is to make it all dynamically deployable and configured automatically. And it's mm -hmm. one of the one of the many things that can be done to improve the the or reduce the amount of time needed to have someone be a networking IT person. Yeah, that's that's a. Do you is any part of that? Um, is any of that documented publicly? Because I mean, this is obviously a little bit much. But I mean, if we could, someone could run a script to run to set up their system. I mean, that that that's a little bit much because we're talking about a lot of uh, connecting. But so we don't have any of that. We we basically we have an instance of VMware and we copy VMs and stuff and we make a okay. new one. That's how we create new VMs. Um, what you can't see in this picture too is in between all of the clients and, and and routers we have switches with configurable VLANs as well, which we don't have automated at this moment. But the idea was is to route to route things around different devices, test equipment as well. I mean, there's so many things we could talk about. This is just way beyond the initial steps, though. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So I don't want to digress too much. Um, setting up VMware for these is the same as setting up a Raspberry Pi, really, though. You just mm -hmm. install Linux okay. and configure it properly. And Yep. What, okay. what if you don't have VMware? Is there another uh, open source alternative that we could? You can use VirtualBox just as easily. Mm -hmm. We were aiming for a bare metal or a lower overhead hypervisor at so we did, we could have like line rate and performance esque things. I'm not sure if VM VirtualBox would meet the requirements or not, but <laughs> yeah, in my documentation, 
I, or in that picture there, I, I, you know, I had physical machines, Raspberry Pis, but you could just as well have one powerful desktop machine with a lot of Ethernet ports and just run um, uh, virtual machines inside of there. Uh, and, and that could be your kit. That could be your whole farm. We can probably fit on a desk and, and run a few boards. Okay. Well, we're to the end of our hour. Um, I'm not sure if we've made any decisions, but it seems like we're closer than when we started. Um, do we want to have another one of these meetings? Um, and obviously we would talk on the, on the OpenWRT uh, purple mailing list, um, but do we want to have a, plan another one of these meetings to kind of just discuss? Um, and uh, you know, I'll investigate some of these topics and see what the feasibility is. And then go from there. Yeah, and we should ask who who has knowledge, who could host a board farm, like so that public just one. like Matthew said, is who can host a board farm that would allow people to arbitrarily connect to, and then who who can host one, and then who can publish results if they already have board farms running, uh, and then I and then the background. Uh, as we should get with art and get the mm -hmm. budget if we could do some of these uh, board farm in a box ideas. Mm -hmm. I, I know I could probably host one at uh, my co-working space. We just got fiber, so and we have open spaces, so we could wouldn't have to pay very much. So that and then I would actually be close to it. Um, but I don't know how many we can put there. A few. Once you get some sort of um, critical mass going, it's easier to get people to to support the things, but that seems reasonable. Someone has to step up and do the first ones. Yeah, because the other thing that would be nice is having a resource who could get these things going yep. for any newbie that wants to host something. You know, where do I start? Um, have and, and basically a purple paid administrator to help get these things going. Mm -hmm. Okay, that seems reasonable. Well, I don't want to keep anyone past our time, but um. I think we should t we should talk about this more on the main list. I'm going to investigate and see the feasibility of actually just setting some some boards up uh, at my co-working space since I'll be right there and uh, and I have time. So uh, and then we'll actually see what are the what are the problems we find and also what are the solutions as much as we can. So and and we can kind of see how this actually works. If that seems reasonable. And we'll also discuss the, the funding topics as well. Seem like good, good next steps. Awesome. Sounds good. Awesome. Yeah. And we, okay. we should we should talk again on this probably I would think in, you know, not in a few weeks because it's Christmas area, but maybe in a month or something and kind of see it and obviously if people have ideas, please send them to the list. If people want to set up their own, you know, awesome. And then we can kind of see where are we going in long term ideas. Awesome. Well, All thank right. you everyone for coming. Um, Thanks, very much appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for the nice Bye. Prezo. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>